and uh, we've got Callum here today to give you a quick presentation of what Callum graduated five years ago five from years. from business management and marketing <laughs> yeah, yeah? Uh, program. So he's just going to tell you a little bit about what he's done. Then I'll tell you a bit more of the boring stuff, like uh, you know what that course was involved in, so they have road options, etc. Okay, now here we are. We are videoing this, so we need to use the microphone. No pressure. I wasn't told. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that intro, mate. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Callum with a K, uh, and I graduated here five years ago. Um, just in case it wasn't clear, you're allowed to smile during this, and you're allowed to laugh occasionally as you are now, so please do so. Uh, it would help me a lot. <laughs> um, in the short time we've together, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, what I've done since graduation, um, what I got out of my time at Harry Watt, um, and just five things I've learned since graduation. And this is like a buffet, version of the buffet we earlier. Um, take the bits you like and ignore the bits you don't. This is not me preaching, this is just my story and it's all I've got. So hopefully you'll find it interesting and useful. Um, so that's where it all started uh, five years ago, pre-beard. It's taken five years to grow. Um, <laughs> you think I'm joking. <laughs> um, like a few of you, I was torn when I was at high school um, between two passions, doing business management and computing. Um, so when it came to choosing options, it was really tough. Unfortunately, my maths let me down. Um, so almost by default, I had to do business management. But I actually did um, Young Enterprise at school. Has anyone heard of that? Is anyone doing young, young Enterprise in school at the moment? A few hands, that's cool. Um, I won't go into it too much, but basically it just inspired me to do business um, f further le uh, further level and do it at Harriet Watt. So that's where we started. Um, I graduated five years ago, uh, as I said, and since then I've had a few jobs. Didn't quite like that, so I now have my own business. Um, and I've had a few of those as well. Um, some have worked, some haven't worked, so if you'll indulge me, I'll tell you about that. Um, you've not really got a choice since you're going to be here for 20 minutes, so <laughs> just get on with it type thing. Um, that was my first business. It was a networking group I set up um, four months after I graduated called Dunfermline Talks Business. I am from Fife. Please don't hold it against me. Is anyone else from Fife? Hey. <laughs> Woo. Um, so... Um, I, uh, I set that because I got my first graduate job um, working for an artificial intelligence company in Edinburgh and a, a lot of blank faces there. That's all right. I still don't know what it is either and I worked for them for four months. Um, very clever stuff with robotics and software. Great first graduate job. Um, you're kind of told, aren't you, to, to after you graduate to, to get a graduate scheme. That's kind of the thing, a graduate job. But for me, it just wasn't, it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel what I wanted to do. I remember sitting in my flat in Haymarket at 11 o'clock on a Friday night. And I, I had to apply for the Nestle graduate scheme. I just thought, oh, I just don't want to do this. And I didn't put my best into it. And it had to be submitted by the midnight. So I only put an hour into it. And it wasn't my best work and it wasn't for me. But I just did it anyway, uh, go through the motions. And then the next day I went onto the Head at What Careers website and was looking at jobs. And I saw this job come up for the, the artificial intelligence company. So I thought, this is a bit different, this is a bit cool. So I went along to it and uh, they hired me. And I got my first graduate job in Edinburgh in the startup scene. And I love the startup scene, especially in Edinburgh. Everyone's so sharing with their knowledge, their experiences, their stories. It's such a welcoming community. And I really felt like, like I fitted type thing. Unfortunately, like most startups, they ran out of money after four months, uh, which wasn't so cool, um, having just obviously got the job. And this is how this, uh, this network group set up. Uh, I did a lot of networking in Edinburgh with that job, but there wasn't so many networking groups in Fife where I'm from, and I thought, well, why don't you just set one up? Um, I was in this restaurant, which you can see a little bit. It's actually a family-run restaurant, opened five years ago almost to the day. Um, when I found out I was losing my graduate job after four months, I went there for dinner with my family to cheer me up. And I loved the place. I thought, this is really cool. And they just opened. So I phoned the owner, Lynn, the next day and said, can we have a chat? I've got an idea. And obviously, they needed to promote the restaurant having just opened. And I was a graduate, um, or new, recent graduate, looking for a new job. Um, so I had two months to get a, get a new job type thing. And over the course of, of um, the networking group, which ran for four years until last December, we had some great people come along from local charities, local businesses, people telling the stories. So for a recent graduate, one of the best things I've ever done, uh, get networking. It's all about who you know. I'm sure many of you know in the room. Um, and I'm going to name drop a little bit because I can. Does anybody recognize that gentleman next to me there? 
It's okay if you don't. Um, I'm name dropping. That's actually Colin Temple. He's the manager of Shoe, the shoe company. He spoke at my second and third birthday party. The reason for bringing him up is I actually met him at a, an event here at Heddy at Watt. Uh, George Davies spoke um, in the Postgraduate Centre when it just opened. He actually founded Next and Georgia Asda, and Colin was in the audience. And one of my lecturers, Patsy Perry, who I believe is no longer here, sadly, um, dragged me over during the, the, sort of the break and said, Callum, you have to meet this guy. And I was like, OK, cool. So I went over, and Colin was, um, he's got quite a dry sense of humour as well. He said, oh, you're Callum. It's so good to see you and hear about your networking group, and you're from Dunfermline. I live there. Let's have a chat. And we meet up every now and again. We had lunch last week. He's a bit of a mentor to me, and he's a really good friend. And that all came from, from being here. Um, it was so funny when I, when I met him, because was, he's was telling me, like, oh, you're Callum, so good to meet you. I said to him, you know, what was it you do, Colin? And he went, I've got some shoe, shoe shops. And I was like, all right. And it wasn't until the very end of the night he gave me his card. And I was like, all right, as in shoe, like that massive <laughs> company that's all over the world. Um, so anyway, we, we set up this networking group. And it was never going to make me any money. It was just um, to get known type thing. And I got a second graduate job, because I still thought, I'll have to get a job. Um, after a few months, I met them at the, another event, the Five Business Show, for a marketing agency in Edinburgh. I graduated from marketing here. I love marketing. I love small businesses. So again, I was back in Edinburgh, back in the marketing, back in startups, love all that. And then after four months, <laughs> we had a chat. Callum, we're just back from holiday. And unfortunately, there's no money left. So today's your last day. I said, not again. <laughs> what have I done? Um, so uh, I'd been a bit of a naughty boy anyway, because I'd been working on my, my second business the whole time which is an events website called whatsonlocally.com. I really, really need a beard there, I think. <laughs> it's just not right. Um, so I, uh, I set up this, this website with my friend's dad, and his son-in-law is a really good web developer. It was to promote local community events and allow organisers to raise extra money. So if Cancer Research UK had an event, a fun run, they could put it up and get extra sponsorship for it. Tried that for nine months on the job seekers allowance, which is £45 a month, uh, a week, sorry, very tough to live off and have a business. Uh, it was ridiculous, I didn't see my friends, I worked 20 hours a day, the usual startup stuff you hear. After nine months, it made no money, in fact, it made a five grand loss. I just thought, enough is enough, I need to just get out of here, cut my losses. And um, what I would say now, though, is it's the best, one of the best five grands I've spent, <laughs> because it taught me how not to run a business, it gave me some great experience. I met some fantastic people, and it paved, paved the way for where I am now. And then I, uh, it was actually Christmas when I decided to quit uh, this business. And my friend worked in the Starbucks in Dunfermline, and I managed to get a job there with them because she spoke very nicely to the manager and put in a good word for me. It's all about who you know. Um, don't forget that. <laughs> That's the one message from today. Um, so I was in Starbucks, and I thought, this will do me till Christmas. I'll get my confidence back, get some money back. It'll all be good. And then, um, I actually was in there a bit longer than just Christmas. I was in there till the following September. So I worked in Starbucks for nine months and I hated it because I hate being told what to do. But looking back now, I think they're one of the best businesses in the world because of their systems and the way they're set up and the way that you can go to any Starbucks in the world and it's exactly the same, it's brilliant. Um, but I didn't appreciate that at the time, funnily enough. Um, so I was still doing my networking group, still in Starbucks, which is very tough. Every week, how are you doing, Callum? Well, I'm still in Starbucks, but could be better. Um, and then someone at my networking group said, you know, you did marketing at uni, didn't you? And I went, yeah. Would you do some marketing work for us? And I said, yes, but I won't do it for free. Because um, the important point here is um, if you don't value your time, no one else will. And that's something I've learned as well. So um, they said, no, no, we'll pay you. This is number three. Audacious marketing. I made that logo myself. I have been informed by friends who have a graphic design business that that is a green they use in Disney films for poison. Uh, so perhaps not the best brand colors to have. Um, these are my first marketing clients, Recycle Fife. You may have heard of them, the Fifers in the room. Uh, they're based in Loch Ellie. They're one of the biggest recycling businesses in Fife. They uh, were my first client. I got into the paper a few times. We did some fancy marketing stuff and uh, I felt good again. I was back doing marketing. Um, I was making money. I managed to just my in Starbucks. And I thought, I'm going to create an agency. We're going to we're going to have a big agency. And then life throws curveballs every now and again, as you may have gathered from my, my previous uh, part of the story. Um, the Carnegie Trust launched a competition called Test Town 
Has anyone heard of Test Town? A few nods? Good. Um, it was a UK-wide competition where you could win 10 grand, which I really fancied. And uh, more than that, though, it was to come up with a new and exciting use for the high street, which, as we all know, are sadly, sadly dwindling and needs some love, really. Um, so my idea was to have a business incubator in the high street where people with new business ideas could pop in speak to experts, like a drop-in shop, and also they could have a place to, to sell their wares, as it were, they'd be in the high street, what a great position to be in for a new business. The judges said my idea was too clever, which I've been told before. Um, they, no, they, honestly, they said they couldn't see how they could trade it in a weekend, because the 10 finalists get to trade it in a weekend, and they just couldn't see how that idea would work. The video I made for the idea, however, I sent to other business people that I knew from my networking group. See, the story is connected somehow. Um, although it doesn't always seem that at the time. One of them was Jerry Alexander, who's now my business partner in my current business, which I'm coming on to. Jerry's um, business is property. He has four business centres. And uh, I sent him the video for this incubator in the high street. And Jerry phoned me straight away. He said, Callum, I love this idea. Come down for a coffee this afternoon. I was like, right, OK, Jerry. Um, and I knew Jerry because with my events website previously, I had a mailing address there. So I'd go down every week and check my mail, and Jerry would be like, so Callum, how's business going? I'd be like, well, not so good, I've lost another £100 this week. Uh, and this went on for a while, and Jerry would take me into a room like this and be like, right, Callum, how can I help you? What's going on? Blah, blah. And I thought, this is so cool, I don't even know this guy, and I pay him £20 a month, and he's putting all his time into me and really mentoring me. I thought, this is so cool. Um, and Jerry's just like that, he's a great guy. So... He said, this idea for your incubator on the high street, I love it, but let's do it in my business centre because I've got the space. It's probably about the side of this room, actually. It's a co-working space. It's got 30 desks in it. People can pop in when they want type thing. And uh, I'll pay you and you can start tomorrow. Whoa. <laughs> so I've got the marketing agency. I'm leaving Starbucks. I'm in a bit of limbo. And then Jerry says, I'll pay you and you can do this, 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 this project incubator for new businesses. And something, again, I really rely on gut, as you may have noticed, I just, it just felt right, like having worked with, uh, experience with Jerry before, and I just felt the opportunity to do something really good would be more than a marketing agency. So we created Acorn Enterprise, which is my fourth and current business, <laughs> which we turned three years old this June. We are a business accelerator. We are on a mission to grow Scotland's startup business culture. We want more people to set up a business. We want more businesses to survive and thrive. Uh, it's better for everyone. That's our mission. We want to help um, 501 businesses in the next three years of our program, which I'm going to talk about. These are the highlights from last year. Um, those were delicious, made by one of our acorns who makes artisan chocolates with our logo on them. Uh, Sam there makes uh, low-calorie gin. Uh, he was on our second program. He's actually engaged with the distilling department here at Harry Watt. Um, Kate is brilliant. She's Russian, speaks eight languages. And she's developed a really cool online app and was listed as one of the top 20 startups in the world last year. Um, so we've got a cracking bunch of acorns. So what do we do? Um, oh, said that bit. Jumping ahead of myself. Uh, thankfully, I'm wearing a different, a different shirt, whereas last week I was wearing the same shirt, which is always embarrassing <laughs> when you come to these events. I just own the same one, like, you know, a wardrobe full of it. Um, that's our acorns, as we call them. Uh, we work with 15 businesses at a time on our accelerator program. They get free office space, um, weekly seminars where we do marketing, sales, finance, and a business mentor. And all that is totally free. So we're set up as a not-for-profit organization. And really develop their confidence in themselves, their, their clarity of where they're going and their business skills. We've now run five successful programs in Fife. We've helped 75 businesses set up. We're now looking to roll that across Scotland. And when I say 501, that's what I mean. We want to help 501 acorns to sprout. Yeah, they are there. I think they're arguing a little bit, maybe, at the back. Uh, we also do business boot camps. Um, so uh, we were approached by a local college in Fife. Fife College, um, who heard about me and heard about Acorn and said, you know, could you do some stuff for us? We said, yes, we did a one-day business boot camp for the students there, which was awesome fun. Um, so we would come in, we'd do an inspiring talk, we'd do some workshops, we'd get students thinking about having their own business. We've now done um, loads of them and we want to do more, more again. This year is the plan, really grow that part of the business. Um, I was down in London last month speaking at the biggest um, student enterprise conference in Europe, which is mental. I had 500, it was 500 students and I had 150 in a room. Um, obviously, this audience is much better today, but, you know. Uh, we also do 3D printing. Has anyone heard of that? A few nods, a few blank faces, that's all right. Um, 
you can basically buy printers now that basically can print things. So you could print a bottle out of plastic. It's absolutely mad. Jerry and I are really big on table football. It's a great stress relief. And we occasionally break players because they're quite aggressive. So we 3D print ourselves a new one, as you do. Um, that's an acorn that we've made. People come to us with products that they've made and they out of cardboard and bits and bobs and they say, can you make this more professional for us? We want to take this to investors. So we make it out of plastic for them and we also do workshops. So, that's enough about me and Acorn. Whether did I get out of my time at Harriet Watt? This is the statement I would say, thinking about it the last five years. It's more than a degree. It's absolutely more than a degree. It's like a solid platform. So, I was saying to Uma earlier, I used to be in this room for lectures, and it's quite weird now being on the other side of that. Um, and if you'd said to me, even when I started uni nine years ago, uh, to get up in front of a room of people to speak, I'd be like absolutely shaking, although now, you're not going to be able to get me off, I don't think. Um, but no, I think it just gives you that solid foundation um, for life, really. So it gives you the critical mindset. Uh, it gives you the tools that you can put the tool bag in when you need it. And it gives you the connections. Oh, dear. <laughs> no alcohol was consumed in that photograph. Um, world's best boy band and a wedding. Um, the reason I'm sharing these photos are this is my story. Um, these three guys are among my best friends who I met at Harriet Watt. Chris has done a PhD here, if you believe it. Um, Ewan in the middle has a graduate job of J.P. Morgan, and that's me. Um, but we always joke that all three of us took different paths after uni, and it's almost like the three paths you can take. So I'm very much in the startup land. Um, Chris is an academic, and, and Ewan's in, in corporate worlds. And I think that's the diversity that, that being here allows you to do. You kind of follow your own path. Um, and we always joke that, uh, yeah, it just sets us up in different ways. Um, the other guy there uh, next to me is Lee. I met Lee in Hulls in Robert Bryson. We lived on campus together. He was my kitchen mate. And uh, we're now really good friends. And I was absolutely honored when he asked me to be his best man at his wedding two years ago. Um, so that was great. And we're now really good friends. He lives in Newcastle with his wife. So you do make friends for life here, and it's not just the people you meet, also the staff really care about you. So I was saying to Uma earlier, I um, bumped into some lecturers earlier today, and they genuinely are concerned about you and want to know you're getting on, not in an intrusive sort of way, but I really like care about you as a person sort of way. So to you, to them, you're not just a student, you're actually a person, and they want to know what's happening in your life, how they can help you, and they really go out their way. And when I was on my placement day, as you all are today, um, that came across, and that's why I came here, was because of the, just felt right, whole gut thing, just the community of people that I met, both other people on the placeholders day, um, and also just the lecturers, really friendly and helpful. And that went on for the whole four years. The second thing I got of, of Harriet Watt is um, a mentor. I like really weird tree pictures for some reason. Um, Mentoring, as I said earlier, is so crucial. That's where we get our acorns, a mentor, someone to give you accountability, someone to bounce ideas off, someone just to say, am I doing the right thing? And one of the best kept secrets of Harriet Watt is you can get a mentor through the careers department, um, as I did. So they match you with someone in industry. So I was lucky enough to get a, a guy that worked for a marketing department for a big uh, company called Salex Galileo, who make um, radars for helicopters and stuff, pretty cool stuff, James. And um, we met once a month for coffee when I was a student here. He helped me with my, my CV when I was looking for jobs. He gave me some life advice. He was a really good guy. The official mentoring ended like seven years ago. We still meet up for, for beer or coffee every time in Edinburgh just to catch up with him. So that's like a fantastic service to do here. Food. <laughs> Does anyone recognize Stoke's porridge? Lots of nods this time, I guess. Um, Tony Stone, who's the um, owner or one of the co-founders of Stokes, gave a guest lecture here when I was a student. I think he still does on John Sanders' model, uh, module. And just by bringing in real people, it just makes the whole experience a lot more enriched. So some universities kind of tell you this is business and this is a textbook and this is, whereas Harriet Watt, I think, are very industry focused. So they want to know what's happening in industry to make you, when you leave here, as ready for the real world as possible. And that came through with the with people like Tony. We also had a um, group project where we um, were given a real life company in Edinburgh called Realize, they're still going. Um, they had some problems and they submitted them to us. We worked in groups and we had to come up with ideas how we can improve the company and we would get to pitch to the management board of Realize, which was quite interesting as a student having to pitch to directors of a company how they can improve their company. But it just made the whole thing real. 
And it wasn't just reading it in a textbook, it actually came to life, and that was on several modules. So, very quickly, before I get kicked off the stage, um, five things I've learned since university that I wish I knew, so don't say I didn't tell you. Um, go networking, absolutely key. Um, I went networking in fourth year. I kind of thought, well, if I'm going to be in Edinburgh, probably, I should go networking and know the, network, uh, the local scene. So there's... Google networking groups, you can find loads of them. Um, met some really good friends, people that helped me with dissertation. Uh, says a really welcoming community. It wasn't even like, oh, you're 18 or you're a student, don't talk to us. It's actually the opposite. They want to engage with you. Uh, get a mentor, funnily enough. Regardless of a job or, or what you do, I think having a mentor in, in, a, in a career is just so valuable. Um, just someone who's a few steps ahead of you that can help you. And don't forget, what skills you have, you can always mentor someone who's a step behind you to help them up as well. The third one is understand and develop yourself. So really know what ticks um, your boxes, learn how you work. Do you work better in the morning, the evening, last minute? Definitely. Um, <laughs> running for late for buses, that sort of stuff. How do you work? How do you learn? And immerse yourself in stuff. You know, um, at Heddy, well, there's always, career, there's always events going on. So I mentioned the one with George Davies earlier. There's one with Jim McCall in a few weeks. Jim's one of the leading entrepreneurs in Scotland, which I'm really looking forward to, um, to come along to that. There's always stuff going on here um, outside the classroom. So make sure you get involved in that. The best advice Jerry's ever given me is start with the end in mind. So before any meeting, know exactly what you're, you're going to do. So when I uh, came here, my goal was to get a degree. It's always a really good degree. But after that, it was really f fuzzy. And that's, I think, why I had such a all over the place story. But I think Acorn is definitely where I want to be from now on. And this isn't spoken about enough, but you have to enjoy what you do. Absolutely key, because you're going to be working for a long time, so you have to enjoy it. <laughs> whether it's in a job, whether it's in a business, whether you go travelling, whatever you do, um, you enjoy it, whether you keep studying after you, you know, do a PhD, just make sure you enjoy it, it's really important. So that's the five lessons. But um, entrepreneurs hate rules, so I've just flung another one in there. Um, you can achieve anything you want to, and that's something that the foundation by being here gave me belief in myself. You know, when you're just coming out of school, you're coming from being at the top of the school to <laughs> a different organisation, different culture. But by being here, the staff believe in you, uh, your friends believe in you, and just, I think you can do anything you want to do. And, and how do I know that? Well, it's pretty up for that occasion. Uh, I was in the Sunday Times uh, Maserati 100 last month, which is uh, a list of the UK's top 100 entrepreneurs given back to the next generation. And I'm not saying that to show off, I'm a little bit, but I'm mostly <laughs> I'm saying it to inspire you that anything can happen because I'm the first person in my family uh, that's gone to uni. Um, I'm from a little town in Fife that no one's heard of. Um, who am I type thing, and I've managed to achieve that. So I would encourage all of you, no matter what you do, just to um, dream big and go for it. Um, yeah, life begins in your comfort zone. If it feels comfortable, then you need to just push yourself out of it a little bit. Those are my details. If anyone wants to have a chat about anything, I'm more than willing. Um, Email, Twitter, phone, website, done. Thank you all very much for listening. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Colm. Uh, if you see this loud noise going a few minutes' time with a blue smoke, that's his Maserati going down the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the garage today. <laughs> what, broken already? Itali <laughs> Italian cars, yeah. Okay, so uh, let me just change the technology over here for a second. Uh, okay, so that's me, good, good old Scottish name, Umit Bittici. Uh, I'm the head of department in uh, business management. And uh, so today, my ob oh, I, I hate this, I've, I've lost my remote control, so I have to go back and forward. Uh, uh, yeah, my objective is to just give you an overview of uh, what, uh, what, the, what we do in the department, the sort of courses you applied for. I, I, I've sort of didn't give any time for Colin, for you to ask any questions to Colin, but, but let me do my bit, then we can, you can ask questions, and we'll have an open discussion at the end, yeah? Uh, so, what are degree options, uh, course choices, mentoring, uh, student representations, and, and question and answer at the end? That's the plan. So, first thing, first thing, universities are about two things. Generally, what people think about it is about research and it's about studying, yeah, courses, educating. But really, what university is about is about 
life. It's about learning about your specific subject, but also learning to live. I think you've seen some of the examples today from Callum's experience. It's about networking. It was, it's about making friends with your colleagues, but also with your lecturers and with other people. So Callum's talking about people he met when he was at university, in industry, in commerce. He's still in contact with them, having a coffee, beer, whatever. So it's about growing up, really. So one thing is that I would say to you is, and this, is, this really underpins our, our education philosophy here in, in this department. So we're not just trying to encourage you to come to the lectures, learn, pass the exam, and that's, that's an important part. But we also want you to integrate and, and network among yourselves, among other parts of the university, with the staff, with our external friends with companies and other industry partners, uh, political partners, so on, so that you actually build a network. So when you leave here, you've got a network you can tap into. And you could see the sort of career options that Callum's exa friend's example is excellent, uh, that he's an entrepreneur, one is an academic, the other one into corporate management effectively. Another thing I would say is that don't be somebody else. Don't try to be somebody else. A lot, of, a lot of us, you know, even at my age, sometimes you come under peer pressure. And you've got to just say, no, I'm going to do what I'm going to enjoy, what I like doing. Yeah? Callum doesn't like anybody telling him what to do. So I decided that he's going to start his own business. Right. I was about the same, actually. I didn't like my... Yeah, I don't like anybody telling me what to do. <laughs> so, we are probably one of the most international universities in the UK. You'll see in a minute. So, what we do, we, our vision is about embedding internationalization in everything we do. So, whether if it's social networks or it's, it's, uh, it's education uh, or in working with industry, there's always an international dimension what we do. Yeah. And, and we, we are looking to globally engage, uh, uh, look to become uh, UK's leading provider of higher education, uh, global provider of higher education. So that's, that's our, what we're trying to be, and we're well on the set to be on our way there. The three things that underpin, the sort of pillars that underpin what we are doing, internationalization, research intensification, and teaching excellence. Yeah. Now, when you come to Harriet Watt, to business management, you'll be primarily uh, interested in teaching excellence. Yeah? But you should also be interested in the other aspects because the globe, the world is a global village. It's become very small. There is companies from all over the world in other parts of the world. There's people from all over the world working in other parts of the world. Yeah? So, so, uh, so you can go anywhere. In the world, you can usually bump into a Scotsman holidaying, uh, working, drinking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so internalization is an important part of industry, commerce, society. But research is also important. Now, sometimes there is a sort of an impression that uh, some of the academics are too interested in their research and they don't really care about their students. Now, that is completely wrong. Actually, what research does is that puts the academic at the forefront of their field. So when the academic is at the forefront of their field, when they are teaching you, mentoring you, talking to you, you're talking to somebody who's expert in their field, who's potentially internationally recognized, well-known in their field. So, and, and what you should do is when you're here, try to tap into that expertise, that knowledge base, that, and, and use that as an advantage. So I said we are very international. We've got a campus here in Edinburgh, which, yeah, which is our home uh, headquarters, if you like. We've got a sm small campus in Orkney as well. Does anybody know where Orkneys are? <laughs> uh, Gala Shields, we've got our textile school, textile design school. Yeah, uh, uh, but we've also got a campus, top one, in Malaysia. That's our new Malaysian campus. It's a fantastic place. It's just halfway between airports. KL Airport and the Kuala Lumpur city centre itself is covered 
if back of it's covered in palm trees and there's a beautiful lake at front, there's water spots and all that, it's fantastic. I want to retire to that campus. Uh, and that's our Dubai campus. It's, 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 it's not middle of a desert. It looks like that in the photograph, but you know, but Dubai is the middle of the desert virtually. But so in the department, they've got about about two and a half thousand students here in Edinburgh. They've got about 1,800 students in Dubai. So it's quite big there. Uh, our Malaysia campus has just started as a second year operation, so we've got about 300 students there at the moment in the department, but growing very quick. So we are properly international. And on top of those three international locations, everywhere you see a green dot, it's a different color of green, yeah? yeah. yeah. It's, not the it's not the poison green. Uh, 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 everywhere we get a green dot, we've got a heri what undergraduate program running in an associated learning partner. Yeah, so somebody else is delivering, under license, is delivering our programs. So we are pro going back to what I said earlier on, we are the second most transnational education provider in the UK after the Open University. And Open University business model is completely different than ours. So, what do our degrees offer? First year is really is a common first year, giving you some of the basics in social sciences and some of the study skills developments, how do you do research, how do you do a literature review, how do you write an essay, things like that. And the subsequent, subsequent years, we've got more electives and options. El elective is something you can take from anywhere in the university. Option, option is that uh, you might have, you know, here's four courses, take, you can choose any two, but you've got to, that's your sort of a limit, limit basically. Uh, so, and it'll be specific to your subject area, basically. So, subsequent to use, you specialize. Uh, and, as you can see from what uh, Callum said, Callum with a K, I love that bit, yeah. Uh, uh, um, I, thought, I, I thought when he first sent me this email, when I first met <laughs> Callum, he got this email. So I'm digressing. When I first got this email, okay, I can see why he said it, but he still sends me emails saying, Callum with a K. I know! <laughs> right, uh, just coming back to what Callum said, uh, some of the statistics on our website, uh, uh, our employment records are very good. I think the latest statistics I've seen was that on average, our graduates get paid £4,000 per annum more than UK average from business management graduates. Yeah? And they go into all types of things. The business starts up, entrepreneurship type of activity is quite high and, inc and is increasing, but also people going into corporate world, in finance sector, in, in manufacturing, in commerce, people going to public administration, and, and further study in academia as well. Uh, as Tip, tip, nicely typified by Colum and his two other colleagues. So we are good at that. We've got a good business network and uh, opportunities are there for you to exploit. So this is a boring slide. All our programs from 2016 onwards, 2016-17 session onwards, are going to be known as international business management. Uh, so International business with law, international with HRM, international with marketing, and so on. And, and what was previously known as, these were all previously known as uh, business management. Yeah? So previously what was known as international business management is basically remains international business management with a year abroad. So if you are coming to, if you've applied for business management, how, how many people applied here to business management degrees? Yeah, so your degree will be called international business management. That is the only difference. The other difference, well, there's one more small difference. That means you can actually study either in Edinburgh, Dubai, or Malaysia because we have the same programs running all three campuses, right? Uh, we don't suggest you study your first year somewhere else. You come to Edinburgh, but there's an opportunity to go to Dubai or Malaysia in your second or third years. So you can see which pro as long as the program is running at that location. So you can see all these program runs in Edinburgh. So you can see what years are running in Dubai and Malaysia at the moment. But by the time you get there, most of these programs will be running in most of those locations. Here is Matt and Johnny. Oh, 
yeah, uh, in Dubai, and they are they've decided to do first year, first semester of this year in Dubai, and they're currently in Malaysia, yeah, and uh, they will be back next year to do their final fourth year in Edinburgh. Uh, this is our first cohort of 30 students from Edinburgh who went to Malaysia. Uh, uh, somebody asked me earlier on today uh, in the big room, uh, do people, most people go to Malaysia, uh, no, the Dubai. No, they don't, they go to Malaysia because Dubai is a lot cheaper, Malaysia is a lot cheaper to live in, yeah? And it's the temperature is much nicer, to be honest, you know, in the, in, in the, especially, uh, you're not gonna be there in the summer, but if you're in Dubai in the summer, you can't live outside, it's just too hot. Uh, but the temperature is like this all the time in Kuala Lumpur, yeah? Uh, really good location. So, what will you do when you come here? Uh, and <coughs> why study and inherit what? Well, first thing is, I think Colin probably put this a lot better than this slide does in a boring way, is that we give you both theory and practice of how do modern businesses work. So by the time you leave here, you understand how businesses work. Yeah, so you should be able to go in and most of our graduates can go in and join a comp employer and start adding value from day one. The courses have got global opportunity, the, the international, not, it's not just in the titles, but the courses about international business, international finance, and international logistics and transport, all those type of things. We also, encourage you to develop, uh, to, to develop your entrepreneurial skills, the, in, the, the, the personal, uh, interpersonal uh, skills, being able to stand up to a presentation, being able to write a persuasive report or give a persuasive presentation. So we, we, we look at those type of life skills, develop those life skills, as you can see. Did he persuade you today? Did, did, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to buy a column? <laughs> Ah, we should have we should have got um, little columns. Yeah. No, just so, so just to get a joke, we've, we've got little little stress cows for you to take away later on, and then I'm, I've just realised that I should have we should have got little little columns. Yeah, you could have bitten his head off. Uh, uh, so global focus, uh, entrepreneur skills. Uh, and, and of course, you can see from the courses that you can specialize. You can either go sort of vanilla business management or say, I'm going to focus on marketing, I'm going to focus on enterprise, human resource management, and so on. Now, if you apply to one of them, it's fine, you can come to it. If you change your mind, they're all the same first year, so you could say, I want to do, I want to change from this track to that track. That's possible. Yeah? It's even possible in further, it's quite easy in the end of first year, but it's quite even possible later on as well, as long as you don't leave it too late. So, and we've got good employment track records, the, the, all the statistics on the website, I'm not gonna go into detail on, on, on that. Uh, and I mentioned about, uh, oh, the inter what was traditionally known as the international business management, now it's called international business management with a study abroad, is, you can study in some of our other partners apart from the three campus locations. So other than Dubai and Malaysia, we've got study partners in Australia, in New Zealand, other parts of Asia, other parts of Europe, Canada, North America, uh, USA. We've got study partners, so you can do your third year there uh, if, if you are on the IBM, International Business Management, with a study abroad track. Yeah, but all that will become clearer once you join. So, um, so what would my degree look like if you're asking that question? So that's what the typical first year would look like. These are the sort of courses you will do across all, all pathways. Doesn't matter if it's international business management, marketing, entrepreneurship, law, you will do those courses that sort of very big fundamentals of social sciences, and management, and business. And then uh, you will start to, uh, in the second year you get, again, a fair bit of commonality. Uh, you've got one elective, there's options, 
and this is these options are specific to which pathway you take. So that starts starts becoming more more specialized there, and then those options are pathway specific, as you can see. Uh, and typically, what would they look like? So uh, in the second year, uh, if you are doing marketing. Uh, second year looks like that, third year looks like that, and honors classes looks like that if you are doing the marketing class. If you are doing the low class, that's what the sort of second, third, and fourth year options look like, basically, or the courses look like. What will classes be like? Well, this is a class, okay? And uh, I'm not any different. Uh, when I'm teaching than what you're experiencing just now. Uh, I don't have two heads when I'm teaching a class or, you know, or anything like that. So, uh, um, and, and the university is making increasingly more investment in our facilities. Uh, so you can see, you've seen that big sort of tent thingy, marquee thingy building up there. That's Oriam, our, our sports performance center. And Actually, although it's sports performance, the home, academic home for Oriam is my department, this department, business management department. Because business management is also about performance of people, it's about teams and organizations. Whether it's public organizations, private organizations, commercial organizations, manufacturing, doesn't matter. So, so we work closely with colleagues with, in Oriam. So, that's, uh, so, uh, so typically you will experience lectures that looks like this in the first year. Lectures tend to be a bit bigger, but they are generally for, su supported by tutorials. Uh, uh, and as Callum explained, we bring quite a few of guest lectures. You might learn some of the theory, what's in the book from the lecturer, but have, hearing it for real from people who are actually practicing it. You know, maybe a director of human resource management from DuPont or Diageo or uh, SHU. Uh, could be talking to you about how they go about managing people and human resources in their organization. What are the challenges? What happens day to day? So, you know, and, and you, you're able to engage with them and ask questions and all that. Something else we do in the first year, we make sure that all our top academics, not just professors, but top academics, people who are leading in their fields, talk to you about their subjects. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so for example, we've got a colleague who's an expert in logistics and supply chain management. He will talk to you about logistics and supply chain management. A human resource management professor will talk to you about human resource management. So in the first year, you get the, effect, the epidemic of knowledge being sort of simplified and, and communicated to you by people who are working in this field, they're enthusiastic about their field, and, and they know what's going on. So to get you to really find out what is this about, and what is the interesting and exciting things happening in this area, to let you inform what you want to do further on in your electives and, 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 uh, and uh, options in years two, three, and four, basically. Uh, your learning is always supported by computer labs and workshops. And, and we also have this vision, our visual uh, uh, online uh, virtual learning env environment, where all your materials, all your class communications, etc., takes place. You can create little networks within yourselves to share and discuss ideas and, and engage with, in a sort of online conversation with the academics and our academic team who's delivering the class as well. So what will happen when you arrive here? We have tailored induction. So it doesn't matter if you are coming for the first time, whether if you're coming the first year, second year, or third year, uh, you have a tailored in induction. Our staff is quite accessible, generally open doors policy, uh, but staff is quite busy, sometimes having meetings and, and, and out, uh, inside or outside here. So we've got office hours as well where they're guaranteed you can find them there and their desk in those times. Uh, we operate a mentoring scheme, which I'll talk to you a bit more later on. Uh, it's already quite good, but we're improving it from next year onward. We have study skills scores, 
uh, how to write critical writing, critical thinking, business skills, and so on. Uh, and throughout the four years, focusing on employability and building those skills. Mentoring scheme. Uh, Callum already talked about mentoring by outside. Who was it again you engaged with? Uh, the, career uh, the career service. Career service put you in touch with, uh, with uh, somebody outside, or what, yeah, the, the, a manager outside. So that option is still open. But within the school, you will get uh, an academic mentor and a personal mentor. An academic mentor can advise you about studies, which options should should take. You might say, I want to do this in the third year. To do that in the third year, what do I need to do in the second year? So it's that sort of advice. So you need to engage with someone who understands the program structure, etc. So that's your academic mentor. We can also give you some specific academic study advice, and you should do this. And also, uh, the academic mentors tend to be subject specialists, so they can give you a little bit of career advice as well. Yeah? The personal mentor is anything non-academic. Yeah? Uh, we've got a whole host of things. You know, I've been done speeding. What do I do? <laughs> My girlfriend left me. What, I, what do I do? I've got an exam tomorrow. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. yeah we, get, we get all sorts of things. It's fun, you know. So, uh, so but you're not, especially those of you who leave home and actually stay on campus, you're not alone. You always have a support structure around you. Yeah. And mentor's role also there is that sometimes you don't know where to get help from. We can point you at the right, that, right places where you can, uh, uh, you can uh, get advice. The academic mentor's key job is to monitor your academic progress and look out for any early warning signs and make sure that we actually address those. Yeah. So with their, their academics, mentors, and personal mentors, both of them are there to help you, really. So you need to engage with them when you are here. Other thing we do is, about September each year, we do employability fair for each uh, for our sort of graduating students. Uh, objective there is really to help them with CV preparation, uh, interviews, mock assessments. As a graduate recruitment process, companies come there to actually meet the graduate. Yeah? So. So going back to what we talked about at the very beginning of my talk, what's really important here is that to you make your own experience. You create your own experience. So we are here to help you. The academic team is always eager to work with you. But when you're here, engage with us and, uh, and you know, help us to create a good, good, positive, fun, rewarding experience for you. So we've got some mechanisms to do that. We've got stuff, student committee, class reps, st student association, clubs and societies. Just yesterday I got an email saying, can we organize a football match staff against students? My response was, Yes, as long as all the staff can survive a football game. <laughs> so we'll see what happens, you know. Uh, we haven't had that for a while. Uh, so, why come to us? Relevant courses, up to date, uh, good co student experience, modern campus, high employment rates, supporting learning environment, friendly caring staff, and that international community, the opportunity to study abroad, which really makes us unique. And you could find us on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and probably a number of other places that I can't remember now. I think that's the last slide. Yeah. So thank you for putting up with us. Hopefully that was uh, useful, informative. Fun. <laughs>